One. What's up, Mortgage Coach community? I am interviewing Tina Bellevue. Uh, Tina, it's been like uh, at least a year since our last interview, right? Yeah, I'm so glad to be here. Thank you for having me. So, so for those of you that don't remember Tina, I interviewed her for the first time, first time four years ago. She was on stage at Sales Mastery. I think that year you shared the stage with uh, our good friend, Dan Keller. You remember that? Oh, I remember. It was amazing. Yeah. yeah. And she, she killed it. And then I, I, I think I've interviewed you every year. And I really put Tina in this category as one of the top mortgage professional, excuse me, real estate professionals in the country. And I think every interview we've done in the past was really about your team. You know, you leading a team that's one of the top real estate teams in the country. So, so why don't you start with just describing that team and then let's kind of evolve at where you're at today. Yeah. So I, um, so hi everybody. I've been a licensed real estate agent since 2005. I'm in the Baltimore Metro area in Maryland. And I first started team building in 2013. By that point I had built a really successful and productive solo practice fueled by having a full-time administrative assistant. And I was really ready for my next level of success. At that point, I was kind of capping out personally producing about 15 million a year in sales volume in my market, which was about like 50 to 55 transactions a year. And long story short, I, I kind of knew I was at a ceiling, but I didn't know why. I didn't know what I was doing wrong and why I was kind of getting harder to grow my business and why I was working all the time. And long story short, a friend of mine gave me the, the greatest book in, our industry, in the real estate side, uh, The Millionaire Real Estate Agent by Gary Keller. And that led to me discovering Keller Williams and committing to building a team and using those models. And at that time, I was, it, it really lit a fire under me because I was ready to do more than just sell and build something and build something for other people. I started to meet and hear from these people that had these big, amazing businesses where they were creating big opportunities for other people and changing their lives and passing on what they know, which was really appealing to me, just kind of who I am. So I was motivated to start building my team fast. I always say like, I didn't sleep. There was like a period of like six months where all I did was like, <laughs> make job ads and like write manuals and set up onboarding and like brand myself and you know went from Tina Bellavo to the Bellavo group. So long story short, over those two years, I grew my sales practice from 15 to 50 million. And it went from Tina plus executive admin to me with an operations team of three full-time, a small staging department and two full-time buyer specialists. And I was operating as like the lead listing agent and, you know, leader of the overall organization. And that was right around when we met for the first time. Yeah. And I, I think what you were super successful, but she did it as Facebook being her cornerstone CRM and her, you know, the way she generated business. So links down below to Facebook marketing, according to Tina. And, and obviously it worked. I mean, you, you, you've got a great practice that team is doing how much in production today? So right now, and I'm, we'll get into this in a minute, I'm not actively producing because I'm onto some other things. So the team has, has sold over 100 homes annually for six years in a row now. And this year we're on pace for about 125. Love that. And, and Tina is still owns that team. Yep. But from a leadership perspective, she has not been on a listing appointment for how many years now? Three years next month. Wow. Yeah. So, so think about it. So many people that are listening to this, you're like, wow, I want to grow this team. But here's someone who grew the team, still is profiting from the team mm -hmm. and, and is also leading at another level. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about what you're doing and then let's pull out some concepts and some strategies around leadership and team building. Like I'm going to be interviewing one of America's most successful team leaders, uh, Ryan Grant tomorrow. And it's all going to be about leadership and team building. So I think it's fun that I'm interviewing you today as a top realtor on leadership and team building. So, oh, I love it. so yeah. tell us what you're up to. Yeah. So, you know, speaking to specifically what I did within the team that has made it possible for me to have a profitable business. So we, we're currently operating at over a 30% profit margin right now. And a lot of that is due to the way we set the team up from the beginning following in my case really committing to the models in that millionaire real estate agent book because they they show you how 
that if you have commissions at a certain point and manage your expenses at a certain rate, you can still be highly profitable and not be personally producing. And I didn't realize the wisdom of what I was doing at the time. I just, once I saw the roadmap, I was like, well, I'll do this and I'll figure it out and I'll find people who are willing to work within this framework and also create a career opportunity where they can grow not just an in income, but in skill set and mindset and a lot of like soft skills. And, and it, it's a really beautiful thing. So, and that's allowed a lot of really cool people to come into my organization, some who are still with me, some who aren't and who have gone on to launch their own companies or go into other fields. But, um, but our team has really been an incubator for talent. But the number one person inside of that story is my partner who runs the day-to-day -day of that business. So her name is Kim Holmes. She's amazing. She ought to be interviewed for one of these at some point. She has sold over 100 homes annually every year in the five years she's been with me. So she's been the lead producer consistent. Year one, I think she did like 50 and then got to like 75 and then 100, 100, 100. So she came into our team as a junior buyer agent. So one of the things that really impacted me when I first heard somebody in my company who was running a big team was about setting your company up where somebody could not just be a buyer agent, but be a lead buyer specialist or director of sales, or maybe even take over for you one day. So I heard that really early on and I was like, well, I'll do that. And I'll have a roadmap for anybody to come in if they're the right person and they show the results and they're the right cultural match where they could earn my seat, kick me out and allow me to go on and do something else and build another business or work in nonprofits or do the other stuff I'm passionate about. So it's kind of amazing that it happened as quickly as it did. So Kim came in as a junior agent in 2014. By 2015, she was full on buyer agent. By 2016, I was offered an opportunity to go lead a brokerage, which is what led me out of the day-to-day -day sales. So in 2016, she took over as list the main listing agent for the team. So she took my seat there. And then I was still involved in leading the team and a lot of like the operational leadership. And then over time, she became the director of sales and started hiring and training and leading the other agents. And now she's full on CEO. So she has pretty much all decision-making control in the company. Everybody reports to her. She's now building it, you know, her way with my full on support and guidance. And, and that's why I have such a, why we have such a high functioning business because I, I grew somebody amazing from within and, and kept creating opportunity for her and wasn't attached to me being in charge and me being the face of everything. And, you know, my, it being all about Tina, that's never been the vision. So that's why we've been able to do what we've done. Well, I've got a lot of questions, but I just want to get another chapter of the story before I start getting sure. tactical. Uh, so what are you doing today? Like what is your day to day? And now that your top goal isn't how many, you know, listing appointments you go on and, how many sell sales your team makes, you know, what, what are the, what are you doing from a leadership perspective and what are some of your goals right now? Yeah. So thank you for asking. And it's funny because part of you and I did an interview a while ago where I talked more like vulnerably about some of my failures as a leader and what was, what I had learned through some mishiring. And I don't know if you remember that, but that was one of the first times I kind of came out with like, Oh, and by the way, and doing all this building, like, messed up a lot and it didn't always feel great. So part of what I discovered in my journey of building the team was that there was a lot more I wanted to cultivate inside myself as a leader and a trainer and a mentor to people professionally. So in 2016, I was approached by the leaders of my local KW franchise. The office is called Keller Williams Legacy. So the owner and existing you know, CEO of that office came to me and said, why don't you come join us and be kind of like the co-leader of the office? We call it team leader in KW speak, so it's a little confusing with real estate team, but they said, why don't you come be a team leader for the office? And, um, and I went for it primarily because I was ready to stop going on listing appointments. I was ready to be less of a lid to my team. And I was really ready to put myself an environment with some people who had a lot to teach me about leadership at an even higher level, a bigger business, a bigger opportunity in a lot of ways, a bigger stage. So I went for it and it was a, a great fit. Within a year of that, um, the person that I had been kind of the co-team leader with helped launch our second office just north of us. It's called Legacy West. 
And then um, last year, about coming up on a year ago, we had the opportunity to buy a third office nearby that's called Legacy Central. So I'm, I'm now a, a part owner in this office as well as the Legacy Central office. So I'm an investor in two franchises and I'm now general managing the three offices. So I'm the leader of the team leaders and we have a vision to be involved in the ownership and operations of 30 KW franchises in the next five years. So what we're building is what we call in our language like an expansion hub and team for KW brokerages because we've really mastered the art of recruiting and consulting top producers and growing brokerages and very similar to teams that open up locations in other cities. We're doing that for the brokerage business as well as the expansion team that are our main owner, a man named Seth Campbell, who's the majority owner in these offices. He also owns one of the top five expansion teams in the country. They're called Five Doors. There, there's a lot of overlap wow. between how brokerage brokerage works and how big real estate teams work. So we actually have like a centralized operational hub that we're also building. So, so that's kind of what my role has evolved into over this time. And we have title companies, we're launching a coaching and training company, and we're just doing a lot of amazing stuff because we have, we have a, a small group of great people that have accomplished a lot in the industry and have a lot of impact they want to make. And we want to make that all over the country. I love it. So, so many great questions. My last question I'm gonna close on just because when you came to this community, you came as this, you know, Facebook leader. You know, yeah. you had really learned how to do that. So I do wanna ask a question like, knowing what you know today, do you still feel the same about Facebook or the, you know, the local team leader, whether it's mortgage or real estate? So know that we're gonna close with a couple of Facebook questions, but let's just get right into leadership and team building. So my first question is, What's the difference between leadership and team building from your perspective? You know, are they different? I think it could depend on what you mean by team building or maybe even like business building. So I think it's almost the same thing. So for me, it's been a set of skills, which include having a vision of where your company is going and in the absence of that, you don't tend to go anywhere very far. And there was a long period in my career where I didn't have a vision. And when I, when I got a more compelling vision, that's when the growth really accelerated. So to me, the leader has to have some kind of vision. And if you don't have a good one, borrow somebody else's. So, so time out there. And I think that's important because I do think that is, if not the difference between leadership and team building, you know, leadership is about that vision. It's about that thing. Team building, it's a process. Yes. But that's interesting that you kind of went right into vision. So yeah, vision is definitely part of leadership. Uh, anything else that you think would go in the leadership bucket versus the team building bucket? Yeah, I think that leadership is who we choose to be and become every day. And being someone that people aspire to be like modeling the right behaviors and mindsets and activities, being available for people, and that very sometimes paradoxical blend of empathy and compassion and accountability and holding people up to their potential and reminding them of that even when they've lost sight of it, which I think is the art that I've been working towards for, for all of this time. So to me, if I think of like amazing leadership and what I've gotten through Seth Campbell and some of the people that I work with, and Seth is blessed to work directly with Gary Keller. Um, so I've seen some models of some really powerful leaders and it's, it's that clear vision, it's fearless accountability coupled with compassion and really caring about the person and helping someone develop in all areas of their life. So, you know, I talk to Seth about my health, my marriage, um, what I'm doing to take care of myself. He makes sure I take trips and take time off. He'll call me out if I'm like emailing him from vacation. So, I mean, our version of leadership is pretty intensive. It's like a, it's more of the whole person than just the job. And, and that isn't for everybody, but, but it's been great for me. And then, and that's what I'm doing my best to pay forward to everyone that I have around me. And also knowing like, I have to keep growing. I have to keep becoming the best possible version of myself and attain new skills and information to give to my people because I don't want to be that sponge where there's nothing left because that can happen. I've had coaches and leaders where 
you kind of get what they have and then and then it's time to move on so our goal with our people is that may happen but i'd, I'd love to be as far ahead of that as possible if that makes sense well, it, it does so before i ask some specific team building um questions that that leadership and you say i'm always working to develop new skills what are some of the new skills that you're currently um working on right now so many anyone who knows me gives me a hard time because i i attend more training than ever and it's always a balancing act of learning new things and then implementing them and then continuing to like do your actual day-to-day -day job um, the two things that helped me develop the most as a person and a leader and a coach and consultant and it it all really goes together have been mostly in the personal realm the first thing is i went to something called the landmark forum which was like a three-day deep dive into it's it's kind of different for everybody but i went to kind of look at career and, and how i was showing up and it's basically a way to kind of discover blind spots about yourself, see them, and then get past them and, and basically go to your next level of success. So I love that. I did that actually about four years ago, right when the business was really taking off and there was a you know major inter interlinkage between my success and kind of unlimiting myself through that process. And then more recently this year, I'm studying neuro-linguistic programming or NLP. Nice. Yeah, so I've gotten really into understanding like the conscious mind and helping other people like, again, it's, it's a different version of like seeing things you couldn't see before or maybe saying like, I've been stuck in this area. I've tried this, this and this, but I'm still stuck. Like, what do I do? It's been a really powerful like tool set for, for that kind of stuff. So you I'm know, really- it's funny. We could, we, like, well, we could spend that whole call on their linguistics because <laughs> I started, you know, Early in my personal development career, I mean, we're talking, might have been 20 years ago, I went to my first Tony Robbins event. Yeah. And the early Tony Robbins books were all neuro linguistics. You know, like Unlimited yep. Power is like a pretty hard to read book on neuro linguistics, his first book. Um, what, what, are you, what are you reading or what are you doing right now to work on neuro linguistics? I'm just curious. Yeah, there's a couple different, I mean, there are a lot of different outfits that teach NLP, yet I've gotten involved with a company called the Empowerment Partnership. Mm. And they have, so they're, they're just a really great purveyor of like NLP teachings. So they have a couple different programs and I'm in their like heavier program called Master Practitioner. It's 15 days of training. So you do like seven days and then eight days. So I'm halfway through, I do the other half in November, I'll be in San Diego for that, and then I'll be certified, and then I could, I could coach people. It's just really cool technology to help people have breakthroughs. So, so I, would, I, I concur, curious. it's powerful. Well, let's, when you get done with that, let's do another call, and we'll just that. focus on neuro linguistics. I would love a refresher myself. And Tina, if you don't mind, I'm gonna share this in the Mortgage Coach Facebook group. If you wouldn't mind putting a link down below on any, information on that that would be really cool oh absolutely yeah so, so let's let's now get into team building you know what what does it mean to you when someone says you know be a team builder and what are the habits of team building or what are the great habits that great team builders have in your mind so back to compelling vision a plan a roadmap a future org chart of everywhere your organization is going what it's going to do why what the mission is how it benefits everybody who's on the team. That has been my number one ingredient in attracting awesome people. And pretty much everybody in both of my companies in the, the legacy KW world and the Bellavo group have come through my database or the database of someone who works with us and, our, and combined with our social media influence because that's all intermixed together. So that's ingredient number one. If you don't have that, you're gonna have a lot of trouble. So that's number Is one. Is there anything you could share for us, by the way, I don't wanna, Anything yeah. that you can give me a copy to, or we can put a link down below to. Yeah, so I'll put some links, but even just simple things like having a mission statement and saying it. Because I used to think it wasn't necessary to say my mission statement, and I was wrong. Like the Simon Sinek Start With Why TED Talk um, really impacted me years ago of you have to tell people why, why things matter. They don't care about features and benefits. It's it's psychological, it's emotional. So the Bellavo Group mission statement is to create and cultivate community because that's what I'm really all about. Real estate's just a vehicle for that. And the KW Legacy mission statement is transforming lives through real estate. And I've watched in these three years, hundreds of people join our company and their whole life has changed. So when I talk like that, like do you kind of wake up a little bit versus me being like, 
let me tell you about job descriptions. It's, it's just a totally right. different place to come from. So, so that's the first ingredient. And then from there, it's really what I've learned in a lot of the team building training that, that we've, that I've been through in our company of having a clear job description, knowing what you want the person to really do, including measurables. So if I'm hiring a buyer's agent for my team, the expectation is that, you know, they'll sign four buyers a month and put three under contract and, and having that clarity. So people even know what a win is and if that win connects to their financial goals. So whether that's an agent hire or an operations hire, having something that connects to a measurable result in the business that helps you hit your goals and drives growth. And people miss that more than you might think. They just hire people and then, and then they don't even know whether it's good or not and whether it's helping anything because you don't know what to measure. You don't know where to focus. And then from there, it's training to the key focus, the, what we call the 20% or the most important big rocks of the job. And then ongoing accountability, awareness, tracking tools around the big rocks of the job. And then hopefully soon or eventually as the person's succeeding in the role and, you know, proving that they're a fit over the first couple months, ideally bringing that like comprehensive leadership style where you're helping them hit their goals in the business, which would be the big rocks, plus their financial goals and anything else that they care about. To me, that's the whole leadership life cycle. And then when that's missing or you miss any of those pieces, you start back over at the beginning and you just get better and better and you fail forward. I failed very forward. <laughs> I, I love it. So real quick, what are the, how do you have critical conversations with people when it comes to standards? Yeah, first is being committed to doing it even though it's hard. I think it's, it's mindset and I, I've just gained experience doing it enough times that I've realized it's always better than not talking about it. And Landmark and some other sort of like fierce conversation type training really helped me actually have those. But the thing I've learned to prevent having to have really hairy conversations more often than not is to have the mini micro conversations weekly and daily so that you don't get the big buildup of no results for months. And then you have to like fire somebody where it might actually seem out of nowhere for them or whatever the case may be. So we have a process where we use a goal tracking tool in our world that's called a 411. It's four weeks, one month, one year. So it takes a one year goal, breaks it down to monthly, down to weekly. And it's like a scorecard of how you're doing. And you know, did I do the weekly thing that moved me towards the monthly thing, which moved me towards the annual goal? And I meet with all of my direct reports weekly and go through the 411, coach them where they need it, provide clarity, course correct, the people where I do that consistently, we're doing great. And, and, if, and if things aren't working, it, it shows up in there. And a lot of the time they'll self-select out without always having to have like really unpleasant conversations. And, and you know, your coachable people love the 411. They, they want to see their results. They want to talk it through with you. They want your counsel. Um, when I've skipped that or had people that don't do it or where I just let it slide over and over again, then that's when it gets hairy because it's actually a failure to communicate early enough, we have a, a pillar of thought here, which is run towards the conversation. So the minute I have that thought where I'm like, man, we're not on the same page, or I thought she was doing that today, but it hasn't happened. It's, it's to have it right then and there and not let it build and build and build. I love that run towards the conversation. Yes. That was a, so <laughs> many, so many good takeaways. So let's, let's close out with some face up Facebook stuff and River yeah. folks. I'm going to put a link to some of my past interviews with Tina because she just did a great job of why Facebook, how Facebook. Um, so knowing what you know today, unless of course you're gonna say, Facebook and social media doesn't matter. Like if, if and that's okay. If you're gonna say, you know what, Dave, after you know all these years, uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. But if, assuming you still think it's powerful for brand building, what, what's different and what are you focusing on right now from a social media Facebook standpoint? Yeah, well, the first thing I'll say is a huge part of why I've been able to maintain a profitable, high producing team is because I maintain my realtor presence on Facebook. So it's a, so important. If we didn't have social media, it's my leverage. It's the number one way I still tell the story of the Bellavo group without talking to every single client and making as many outbound contacts as I used to. So it is absolutely critical. Um, I think the one mistake I made that I've course corrected on more recently is being even more authentic. Like for a while, I think I had very like a shiny veneer of like 
sharing all the highlights and nothing like on the inner workings or stuff that isn't maybe exactly where it needs to be. And I found that my like really authentic type of, I did a Facebook live this past Saturday. You guys might want to go look at it. I went to this really incredible seminar for women in business last week. And I had a lot of takeaways, some of which were very personal. And I did a very like open Facebook live about it on Saturday and I've gotten blown up. So video opening up, sharing my lessons, my ahas, there's such a hunger for it in this world to hear how people are overcoming and becoming better. At least that's the audience I'm choosing to cultivate with my like social influence. Like I'm really clear of like who I want to attract and that that's a funnel for my business because if someone doesn't have the same values of growth and personal development, they won't be a great match for any of the companies that I'm part of. So, so I'm, I'm using Facebook more than ever and Instagram to build more of a personality that I can attract talent to and then find the right spot for them in any of the organizations. Love it. So, so much value from this. Guys, if you're listening to this and you got value from the conversation, give us a like. Um, share this with your mortgage friends. And let's close out with a thought on the future of housing. You know, whether you're a realtor or you're a mortgage professional and you're local, you live off of referrals. Any words of wisdom that might help local realtors or referrals that live off of referrals make the next decade better than the last decade? Any, any last thoughts to close out this conversation? Yeah, I mean, this is a really hot topic in our company because we're in a technology revolution in Keller Williams. And what I'm really clear on is that the agents who don't get on board with really good cutting edge technology and know, in, know it inside and out are going to be at a huge disadvantage. And what's going to happen is consumers who want that kind of experience are going to go work with someone who offers it. Just like I get my food delivered through Uber versus driving five minutes. Like I, or... I could give you countless examples. It's why I you know, buy everything on Amazon instead of going into stores. So we've got to meet the consumer where they are. And then on top of that, because of how much data is available online about housing and real estate and mortgages, and that the technology is going to get better and better at giving people insights and more than just the data, but like, hey, like here's a actually decent value estimate of your house or whatever the examples are. As the agents, we have to be, and, and loan officers, we have to be steps above that and have such subject matter expertise and such credibility and so much more to add than what you could find on, you know, key websites like Zillow or Redfin or whatever the case may be. Like, you've got to be better than that. And I think, can you stay in business without great technology and without that subject matter expertise? Maybe, Probably not for the long haul, probably for the midterm, but you will lose business. And you and it for anyone who's been doing this for more than a year where you're hoping to retain past clients and get lots of referrals, if you're not doing those two things, your your profit margin and your future opportunity is just decimated. Yeah, so, it's tricky. Well, we, we use the acronyms a lot, W A Z C D which stands for what Amazon and Zillow can't do. Oh. You, need, you need to do what they can't do. Yeah. And then to your point, you also need to do what they can do. I mean, if you wanna thrive as a local referral-based leader, you need to absolutely do what they can't do and can do if you wanna thrive. And that means leveraging your locality, you know, leveraging your who. You are a unique human being that could show up with empathy in a way that they can't do, could show up, you know, with brick and mortar in that local location like they can't do. Um, but you need to use tech. And if you don't use technology, you will get crushed from people like Tina that, that will. You'll, you'll do a great job of the art and science of being a realtor. So, so yeah. Tina, super grateful for the time you spent. And uh, hopefully we get to see you in person. I'm gonna be back east on some lacrosse tournaments coming up. So maybe I'll get to see you in Baltimore. And uh, all you guys, if you do have a referral for Tina in Baltimore, she appreciates that kind of thing. And uh, Tina, thanks for all the time. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right, take care.